Good morning. Today is January the 12th in this 2022 year of our Lord. We have blue skies and sun and cold temperatures. Uh, it is what winter is and I hope that it is moderate wherever you are and that you're enduring whatever cold may be engulfing this United States, this country of our home. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the 22nd chapter of St. Luke. It's today we focus on the sacrament of the church, the Lord's Supper. When the hour came, he took his place at table, and the apostles were with him. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out <clears throat> for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. And then they began to ask one another which one of them it could be that would do this. The Gospel of our Lord. Hans Kung writes the following in his book, The Church. The Lord's Supper is then essentially a fellowship Koinonia, communio, and in a double sense. First and foremost, the Lord's Supper is a fellowship in Christ. Christians are called to fellowship with the Son, with the Lord. And the Lord's Supper is fellowship with Christ, and so fellowship with other Christians. Their common union with Christ naturally leads to a union of those who share the Lord's Supper a communion of Christians among themselves. The one is not possible without the other, because they all partake of the same bread, our Christ. And then continuing. So much is clear. The Lord's Supper is the center of the church and its various acts of worship. Here the church is truly itself, because it is holy with its Lord. Here the Church of Christ is gathered for its most intimate fellowship as sharers in a meal. In this fellowship, they draw strength for their service in the world. Because this meal is a meal of recollection and thanksgiving, the Church is essentially a community which remembers and thanks. And because this meal is a meal of covenant and fellowship, the church is essentially a community which loves without ceasing. And because finally this meal is an anticipation of the eschatological meal, the church is essentially a community which looks to the future with confidence. Essentially, therefore, the church must be a meal fellowship. A koinonia or a communio must be a fellowship with Christ and with Christians or it is not the Church of Christ. In the Lord's Supper, it is stated with incomparable clarity that the Church is the ecclesia, the congregation, the community of God. In the Lord's Supper, in fact, the Church is constantly constituted anew. If the Church owes, if the church owes to baptism the fact that it is a Church, and does not have to become a church through its own pious works. The church owes to the Lord's Supper the fact that it remains a church despite any falling away and failure. 
From God's viewpoint, this means that while baptism is the sign of electing and justifying grace, the Lord's Supper is the sign of sustaining and perfecting grace. From the human viewpoint, it means that while baptism is above all the sign of the response of faith and obedience, the Lord's Supper is the sign of the response of love and of hope. And let us pray. Lord, it is you who have constituted and created and gifted your church to us, a people who are unworthy to receive that gift. Yet we are the members of that one body, that body that has formulated a confident faith in your works on our behalf and that has constituted a good work on behalf of each other let us be good and true reflections of this creation that you have bestowed upon us your church let us walk in the light of your words your words of truth and hope and possibility and help and all of those things combined that make us something special in your sight. You have created a community in which we have life and being, a fellowship upon which we might trust, love and care one for another. And we are grateful, O oh Lord, for the signs, the visible signs of your church's presence as it is manifest in each individual who believes as we carry forth our mission into the world. Let us be true and good reflections each day of your Christ. Strengthen us in our faith that there is in tomorrow always a hope, a hope that brings eternity. And, O oh Lord, we pray for our communities where we live and have our being. Might they be places that care for the neighbor in need, might they be places of joy and fulfillment for children who might find safe havens to play and to laugh and to grow into maturity. Might they be places of productivity where each can find a meaningful labor. And, O oh Lord, we pray for our world, a world that is often troubled by turmoil, a world that is troubled by the haves and the have-nots being disproportionate, a world in which people hunger and long for a vision of tomorrow that is better than today. And we pray that you would embrace that world and help us to be instruments of your peace. Grace us, O oh Lord, grant us the help we need for our individual needs, for those for whom we would pray and intercede for Hazel, for Nancy, for Tom and Nikki, for Lisa, for JT and Miriam, for Bill, for Inez, for our friends, Becky and Sarah, for grandson Sam, and for each that longs for healing and a better day in their living. Give them encouragement, O oh Lord. And here now, our concerns that we lift up before you in the silence of this moment. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord this day and forevermore. Amen.